All right, here's a brief, brief little introduction on characteristic impedance. Now, characteristic impedance is useful whenever you have an LC circuit. So it could be a series or parallel, R, LC, and I'll just go ahead and put a series here. Uh, you'll note that the natural frequency, the resonant frequency, is the square root of 1 over LC. You should also know that the damping or attenuation factor, excuse me, attenuation factor or attenuation coefficient alpha is equal to R over 2L in the case of a series RLC. And I suppose since I'm doing this, let's go ahead and do a parallel. In this case, we'll have the same omega n, but we will have an alpha that is equal to 1 over 2 r times c. And um, the natural resonant frequency occurs at this 1 over root of lc. Now, uh, assuming that you've had a little introduction on impedance, impedance is the ratio, okay, ratio of v to i when v and i are of e to the st form. In other words, if s is 0, then it's a constant, it's a dc. If s is real and negative, it's an exponential decay. If it's uh, real and positive, then it would be exponential growth. And if it's complex or uh, imaginary, then it's going to be some kind of sinusoidal form. Those are the type of signals that we're talking about. When that is the case, and you take the derivative of the voltage or the derivative of the current, you end up getting e to the st back and with an s out in front. And what that leads to is that, uh, let's say in the case of the inductor, where we have uh, I, L, and VL, and we have VL is equal to L, D, I, L, D, T. If I, L is equal to some constant I times E to the ST, then VL, when we take the derivative, will be S times I, E to the ST, or just S, oops, and I forgot the L there, I'm sorry or SL times IL. This SL is a constant. We can do the same thing with a capacitor. We have VC and IC, and we would say that IC is equal to C DVC DT. If VC is of the form, some constant capital V E to the ST, then I C is equal to C times S times the voltage back. So in other words, we have S C times V C. So we have a constant proportionality between inductor current and inductor voltage. Very lovely. That's very nice. You should see her. She looks beautiful in her princess outfit. All right. Now, uh, we define the impedance of the inductor as, well, it's going to be voltage of the inductor over current of the inductor, which will be S times L. And the impedance of the capacitor is defined as VC over IC. Well, my computer's really slow right now. So I'm running off of a battery, okay, which is equal to 1 over SC. Okay, so to round this out, we can say that the impedance of a resistor is just equal to R. Now, this is only valid for uh, exponential type signals. So now, where does the characteristic impedance come in? Let's consider, Consider the natural resonant frequency, omega n, which is equal to 1 over the square root of LC. Question is, what is 
Oops. What is the impedance of the inductor at a frequency omega n, specifically when s is equal to j times omega n? Now, the reason we're going to do j in front is because remember that if s is purely imaginary, then we have uh, sinusoidal excitation. In the case of the natural frequency, we have L and C that are oscillating. They're oscillating in a fine sinusoidal fashion. So uh, as we've seen when we solved the second order differential equation, the roots of the characteristic equation are S equal to plus or minus J omega N. So let's go ahead and plug that in, and we'll see that the impedance of the capacitor is J omega N times L. But omega N is equal to uh, 1 over root 2, uh, root of LC. So we can say L over root of LC, and now I can pull that L in the numerator into the radical, and we have J times the root of L squared over LC, which reduces the square root of L over C. Now if we do the same thing for the capacitor, the impedance of the capacitor at j omega n, value of s of equal to j omega n, is 1 over j omega n times c. We can, pull the, we can multiply the top and bottom by j, so we'll get j at the top, and in the bottom we have j squared, which is minus 1, so we'll put a minus 1 out front. And now we will uh, replace omega n with the 1 over root of lc, which puts l root of lc in the numerator. We're left with C in the denominator. We now pull the C into the radical, and we end up with 1 minus J, sorry, times square root of LC. And this quantity, square root of LC, is this special characteristic impedance. We define the characteristic impedance as L, square root of L over C. Now notice that, let's say L is 1 Henry, C is 1 Farad, so square root of 1 over 1 is 1. So the impedance of the inductor at the frequency of resonance, natural resonance for this LC circuit, is J 1 ohm. Okay, It's complex, as might be expected, because we're talking about an inductor, not a resistor here. The capacitance, on the other hand, has an impedance that's going to be minus J. Uh, times 1 ohm. And when we put an L and a C together in series and we consider their effective impedance when you add them together, it will simply be the sum of ZL plus ZC. And we can write that as J omega L plus 1 over j omega L C, or I'll go ahead and put the minus 1 and bring j up in to the numerator. So it'll be 1 over omega C. And what we find is that at the frequency that the LC circuit resonates naturally, the impedance of the capacitor and the inductor are equal and opposite in sign. And so when we plug in omega equal to omega n, this natural frequency, we end up with j square root of LC minus j square root of LC, which is equal to zero. And so you think about a circuit like this. If it has no impedance, n no impedance at a particular single frequency, then the question is, does it take any voltage to drive a current through this circuit? Say I have some voltage Vs. And the answer is no. If there's zero impedance in a loop of wire, zero impedance, any, nothing blocking the current, then I don't really need any voltage to keep a current going as long as I have some initial current or some initial voltage that will get things started. In other words, I need some initial energy in my inductor or in my capacitor. So uh, long story short, characteristic impedance is defined as square root of L over C, it has units of ohms, and the significance to it is that uh, the impedance 
of an inductor at the frequency that it resonates with the capacitor will be Z0. And the impedance, well, it'll be J times Z0, and the impedance of the capacitor at the frequency of natural resonance in an, in a, an LC circuit is going to be minus J times Z0. Lastly, to round this out, someone had mentioned in class uh, reactance. So what we can do is we can write Z in general as equal to some resistance plus J times some reactance. Okay, and uh, R is the real part and X is the imaginary part. Now when we look at the impedance of an inductor, for instance, it has zero resistance, real resistance, well, has zero real resistance, uh, and it has J times omega L imaginary uh, reactance. Okay, so as a reactance, we say X of L is equal to omega of L, and we can say that the impedance of a capacitor is equal to zero <coughs> ohms plus real ohms, m or plus J times minus 1 over omega C. This minus 1 over omega C is the reactance of the capacitor, minus 1 over omega C. And so we say at resonance, the reactance of the inductor is equal to, or we say the reactance of the inductor plus the reactance of the capacitor are equal to zero. And that occurs when we have omega L minus one over omega C is equal to zero. And if you go to solve for omega, let's bring the one over omega C to the right, we'll have omega L equal to one over omega C. And now we have omega squared equal to one over LC leading to omega equal to one over the root of LC, which is what we had found previously when we solved the differential equation and came to the characteristic equation that led to the roots. All right, I'll stop there.